Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome back. Look, we still have Naaman on the board, not mine, because we're gonna finish talking about him today, and then we're gonna go into one of the judges, the only woman judge. Her name was Deborah. I'm so excited. Okay, look, competition's still going on. That's why we saw the question mark up here. It's only, what day is today? Wednesday, right? Okay, so you guys tell me, Whose favorite Bible story is Deborah? Is it Mr. Mark, Miss Lily, Miss Susan, Mr. Matt, Miss Bethany, Miss Karina, Miss Ashley, Miss Proxy, Miss Haley? Whose favorite is Deborah? Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, you guys. So let's get started. We're gonna pray. Then we're gonna read our. We're gonna do our verse. Don't forget to say it to me. Make sure you write it um, two times every night until you say it to me. And then. Um, we're gonna sing our song, but we're not gonna get into any information today, and I'm sorry, you guys, but I know I told you we'd talk about John Wycliffe and Tyndale and everything like that, but today we have two Bible stories to get through, and we're gonna go through your homework, so today's gonna be a busy day, but I do wanna practice a song one time so that we can, be re we can be learning those verses because we have like almost 70 verses to learn so we can learn the themes of the Bible, okay? By your hands, close your eyes. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. And thank you for each of these students. I pray that you be with each one of them um, to with their work, that you help them to understand everything, that you help them not to get frustrated or overwhelmed or get sad or anything like that. I pray that you help them to do their best and to understand everything about your word today. I pray that you help all of us to do everything to your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, stand up for your verse. Here we go, Genesis 2, 7. One, two, three. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. One more time. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. Genesis 2, 7. Entonces Jehová Dios formó al hombre del polvo de la tierra. Okay, entonces Jehová Dios formó al hombre del polvo de la tierra. Okay, let's sing our song. Get out your song sheet. I hope you already have it. If you don't stop the video, get your Bible, get your notebook, get your song sheet, get your verses, get your, I don't know what else, <laughs> your Bible journal, right? Okay and make sure that you have everything there. Here we go, let's sing this song. <clears throat> One, two, three. In Genesis, the beginning of world, men, sin, and Jews. In Exodus, from slavery, God's people were set loose. Leviticus gives Jews laws, numbers, Jews, wanderings. In Deuteronomy, words Moses spoke cautioning. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. In Joshua, our battles won in the promised land. In Judges 13, leaders in Ruth love as God planned. The books of Samuel tell us. Souls and David's lives, Elijah and Elisha, the book of kings comprise. In Chronicles we read of David and Solomon, the Jews returned in Ezra, the temple was begun. The walls the Jews constructed in Nehemiah's time. In Esther, Jews escaped death from Haman's awful crime. Okay, last to stroke up for today. <clears throat> I want to make sure that the boys are singing. Are the boys singing? Frankie, Ethan, Abiel, Daniel, Oscar, Duena. Andres, anybody else? Girls, are you singing? Make sure you're singing, okay? Here we go, let's do it. <clears throat> Last one for today. 
In Job we read of suffering, the Psalms are songs of praise. In Proverbs is advice given for all throughout their days. Ecclesiastes tells us how empty life can be. The Song of Solomon tells of love in its beauty. Good job, I think. I can't hear you, but you can always send me a video of you singing. That'd be so cool. Okay, here we go. Go back over to 2 Kings 5, 1 through 19. <clears throat> I'm going to drink a little coffee while you're getting there. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> what do we already know about Naaman? We know that Naaman lived in a country called what? Anybody know? Syria. Was that an enemigo or an amistad of um, Israel? Enemy of Israel. So much an enemy of Israel, right? Then Naaman had gone into Israel and took some people captive. Some people as esclavos, like this little girl right here, right? But what did the Bible teach us? That God used Naaman to give the victory to Syria, to do that to Israel. Why? Because Israel <clears throat> was disobeying. And Israel was being rebelling against God, and so God had to give them a castigo, which he used Naaman to do that. Well, Naaman had a problem. What was his problem? He had leprosy, okay? He was a lepra. And so he was very, very, very sick. Remember, lepers are supposed to be sent out of the city. Well, if he's sent out of the city, how is he going to bring more victory to the people of Syria? So the king of Syria is, like, very concerned. He's like, look, this is my best military guy. He's the jefe of our military. He's getting us all these, these, um, ganancia and all this win. What am I going to do? Well, this little girl who really had every rasson in the world to be mad at Naman said, I know a man in Israel that can heal him and you should send him there. He was telling his wife and you should make him go there because Eliseo, the prophet, his name in English is Elisha, he will heal him, right? Now, that was really cool, that girl, because this man could be her enemy, but she loved him anyway and tried to help him. And guys, that's what the Bible says. If you know how to do good and don't do it, it's sin, right? And she knew how to do good. She knew how to make, how to make this man better, and so she told him. So, Naaman leaves. And the king of Syria sends a letter and it's to the king of Israel, right? And it says to the king of Israel, we need you to heal this man. We need you to send that to him. And the king of Israel kind of like freaks out. And he's like, what do you mean? How am I? And he like rips his clothes and he says like, how do I have the power to heal this man? I don't have any power to heal this man. He just wants to fight with me, is what the king of Israel said. Aye, aye, aye. Because the king of Israel, I told you he was being rebellious, and he, tampoco did he know that he had a man of God inside his kingdom that would heal Naaman. Now, he knew about Eliseo, but do you think, I'm sure he knew about Eliseo, but do you think that he was paying attention to the fact that he was a man of God? No. So, Eliseo heard about it, how he's like all crying and everything, and he said, send the man to me. Send the man to me and I will talk to him and I will heal him. He knew that he had the power to do that. Okay, so here he is. Here's the man talking to Eliseo. My mom talking to Eliseo. And remember what Eliseo told him. And guys, you're going to love Naman. He's crazy when he gets um, told what to do. Remember what he says to do? Go and bathe yourself in the real Horan. How many times? Seven times. Guys, that is easy. That is easy, but be honest. When your mom or dad sends you to Banyarse, do you always want to? I know it's cold. cold. The water is cold because I don't want to. I can't quiero bañarme hoy. Right? Okay. Well, Naman was like that. Naman was like a little kid. 
Okay, so next time that you do that, you're being like the man. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, look what it says in the Bible. Put your finger on number 10. I believe that God gave Eliseo the wisdom to know that Naaman was a proud guy. He had orgullo in his heart. Because look what it, it says in verse number 10. Entonces Eliseo le envió un mensajero diciendo, Ve y lávate siete veces en el Jordán, y tu carne se te restaurará. Restaurará, right? Y serás limpio. First of all, two things. He tells him he has to go do something, okay? And second, Eliseo doesn't even come out and tell him himself, okay? He sends a messenger. Did he have to send a messenger? Mm -mm, mm -mm. But I think it was to revelar, guys, his orgullo that Naaman had. Because look what it says in verse number 11. Y Naaman fue enojado. Look at him. Look at his face. Y, so look at it, y Naaman se fue enojado, diciendo, He aquí, yo decía para mí, saldrá el luego, y estando en pie, invocará el nombre de Jehová, su Dios, y alzará su mano, y tocará el lugar, y sanará la lepra. He said, look, I thought he was going to come out to me, and then he was going to do his thing, by talking to his God, su Dios, he said, and heal my lepra. But now I have to go somewhere, okay? And look, he keeps going with it in verse number 12. Look at this guy, is mad. Look at this verse number 12. Habana y Farfar, ríos de Damasco, no son mejores que todas las aguas de Israel. So look, now he's not even just sending me to the best river. He's sending me to the real Jordan. We have better rivers in Syria, is what he's saying. Si me lavaré en ellos, no seré tan bien limpio. Y se volvió y se fue enojado. Was he going to do it? I don't think he was going to do it. But thankfully, he had some friends around. Look what it says. Más sus criados se le acercaron. Cálmate, por favor. Y le hablaron, le hablaron, diciendo, Padre mío, si el profeta te mandará te mandara alguna gran cosa, no la harías? ¿Cuántos más diciéndote, lávate y serás limpio? Guys, he needed to be humble. He needed to be humilde. Even his own servants came to him and said, Naman, if you would have asked you to do something big and excellent and beautiful to clean your lepra, would you do it? So what is the big deal? Que tiene que ver if you have to go into the real world on and bañarse. Just go and do it, he said. They said. Verse 14. El entonces descendió y se zambulló siete veces en el Jordan. Okay? He had to humble himself. Conforme a la palabra del varón de Dios y su carne se volvió como la carne de un niño. Y quedó limpio. Look at it. Here come the servants and he said, it worked. Can you believe it? It worked. Do you think his heart changed toward Eliseo? Oh yeah. Now he is agradecido. Guys, here's the thing. We have to be humble. We have to, guys. You guys know what orgullo is. Orgullo is always wanting to be the best. Always wanting to be on top. Always wanting to be number one. Always wanting people to look at you and say, you're the, the, you're the best. In the house, what does orgullo look like? You want to eat first. You want everything first. You want your mom to give you the most. You want your mom to always give you things, right? Orgullo is ugly, you guys. Orgullo only thinks about one person. Who is it? You only think about you, right? But the Bible says in order to be better, we have to be humble. In order to be better, we have to be willing to be last right? Put other people before you guys. Let your sister eat first. Let your mom eat first. Ask her if you want, if she wants help in the kitchen. Don't sit down when your mom's cleaning. 